Hey guys, welcome back. And today I'm very excited to show you a book that was just recently published called Before Mario. Um, this book basically covers the line of products that Nintendo released before uh, Mario Brothers came uh, into the into the market. And as you guys probably know, Nintendo it's a very old company. They were founded in 1889 and they started as a Hanafuda card uh, company. So uh, this book covers uh, the toys and electronics that Nintendo released uh, in between its foundation and before Mario Brothers was released in the market. So uh, the book is about 228 pages long. It has five chapters. It's hardcover. Um, as you guys can see here, we have the spine. Um, this is the collector's edition of the game, um, and it's published by a French publish, uh, publishing company called Omake. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And um, I guess if I can, I'm going to leave links below if you guys want to order this book, which um, highly recommend it if you guys are Nintendo fans especially. Um, it, this is a very nice resource for what Nintendo did and it's a very interesting read. Um, this right here is the collector's edition that uh, it's for those people that pre-ordered the book and as you guys can see here the, the collector's edition has a um, numbered um, a serial number here and I was I guess somewhat early into ordering the book so uh, I'm not really sure if they have any uh, collector's editions or limited editions available still but the, the, the differences are the cover um, the collector's edition has a black cover and the normal edition has a white cover and the collector's editions comes with a trading card like this I'm not really sure what the trading card is about um, and uh, this is the name of the book before Mario and it showcases one of the Nintendo toys the Ultra Hand and uh, it comes with this trading card and a bookmark that is signed by the author of the book which is Eric Voskuyu I'm not really sure if that's how you pronounce it but a very nice um, bookmark and it also comes with the uh, 2014 uh, catalog for the publisher um, this right here is how the normal edition looks. It's a white cover with the Ultra Hand toys uh, toy from Nintendo. But uh, enough of that. Let's just get started. Let's crank this bad boy open. And uh, as you can see here, we have the Love Tester, one of the most uh, popular uh, Nintendo books. Um, the foreword is done by Satoru Okada, who worked in the creation of um, things like the Game Boys and the Nintendo DS. Uh, very, uh, very smart person, very influential uh, within uh, Nintendo. And the introduction obviously is done by Eric uh, Voskuil. Um, it's a very interesting for, uh, introduction that he does. And the next page over has the summary. And there's a interview. Uh, this is basically the Nintendo timeline. And as, as you guys can see, it just says how, you know, they were founded in 1889. And all the way to present day, all their major products being released. Um, just a quick overview on the timeline of Nintendo. And this is a very interesting interview uh, of the author of the game, um, asking him about his collection. He is a huge Nintendo fan. Um, and he obviously, obviously not only does he collect video games, but he has all these old school Nintendo toys. So he has a very kick-ass collection. And uh, here we start with uh, chapter one, which are the family games. And as you guys can see, uh, these are um, board games and things like that. Um, this is one of the first Nintendo um, toys released in the market. It's just essentially a baseball table uh, with a marble that uh, springs out of this hole and then if you push the white button your um the you know the player with the bat swings and the ball basically falls into one of the holes and you add the uh, points and things like that very cool the game comes uh, not the game the book comes in two languages french and english so if you folks live in canada and you prefer french i guess you can uh you can read in French if you want to. And uh, here we have some board games, some early board games. I'm not gonna go over every single page of the book in detail because 
if you guys want to see the full product you have to buy it um, support the uh, author because this is a fantastic book very colorful very high quality in the pages um, I'm just gonna skip to the most interesting stuff here uh, some board games released this is a field hockey game um, that was pretty popular um, this is a paper model airport set which is very interesting how Nintendo this came out in the 70s when the there was a crisis and the plastic prices were going up so Nintendo um, you know they um, they were smart and they released paper products for a while because the, pr the prices of plastic were a little bit high and it's really interesting how a lot of the things that were released or that are detailed here in the book relate to Nintendo in terms of innovation and creativity uh, you can really see that uh, the lineage of Nintendo uh, of the Nintendo business model um, here this is chapter 2 and it's the uh, toys and uh, we see some uh, coaster games like this one very interesting read guys if you are remotely interested in this book I say get it um, by all means this is a very interesting resource and as, as I was mentioning this really it's a forward to what Nintendo is doing nowadays they focus on creativity rather than you know following the normal trend if you will here's perhaps the first major um, success in terms of toys I, will, I had a lot of fun reading this this is the ultra hand um, and this was designed by uh, Yunpei Yokoi which is the creator of the Game Boy the Virtual Boy and uh, he, he was it was its his first creation this is back in 1966 and very interesting um, Mr. Yokoi as we all know um, he is the man behind the creation of the Game Boy and as you can see he had a pretty big saying this this was his first his first product and because it was such a huge success he ended up moving up the ranks um, and uh, being a more uh, important person in the um, organizational you know a chart within Nintendo if you will so very very interesting stuff let's just fast forward a little bit here Nintendo also got into the Lego type of um, toys uh, they had their own building uh, sets this is here perhaps a somewhat of a Animal Crossing uh, predecessor if you will where uh, you had dolls with each one with it uh, with their own house really really interesting stuff um, I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit again if you guys want the, the full the full book I, I'd say it's worth it um, I think it's about 28 euros which is it may sound like a little bit hefty uh, of a price point but again I think it's very much worth it especially if you're a Nintendo fan um, there's a lot of uh, interesting things um, here's a couple of interesting uh, tech toys from you know from a technical point of view we have the companion which was a walkie-talkie and here's perhaps one of the the one that caught my attention the most is the uh, light telephone uh, basically um, this was a uh, you had a headset with a microphone connected to it and by shining a light into the other person you were able to transmit the uh, your voice to that person without using any type of uh, other you know things it was basically uh, your your voice was being transmitted through um, basically light um, very, very interesting I mean very like out, uh, very out there very Nintendo like always taking risks in terms of innovation and I, I'm, I'm not really sure if this was a success um, like the ultra hand for example but nevertheless it's a very interesting concept and just a, an example on how Nintendo was always thinking ahead and uh, trying to be innovative even back in the in the day so most of these toys are you know date back to the 60s and the 70s uh, very interesting here this is basically a, a baseball like machine that throws the balls at you and you know you have to hit them with with the baseball bat um, this is the lob tester another very popular product and um, really cool it, it has you know advertisements from back in the day um, you know advertising the product um, very very interesting very um, 
very cool stuff here. We have the predecessor of Donkey Konga, guys. This is a basically a a Konga auto player. Um, <laughs> so, and here we have the guns. For those of you that uh, say that Nintendo is kitty, <laughs> they even had some. Uh, this is a pretty cool, actually. It's basically a light gun that uh, when the light uh, the, uh, it's being detected in this bottle, it has a spring that shoots the bottle so it gives you the impression that you're shooting at the bottle and the bottle is breaking apart. Um, <laughs> yet another funny, uh, you know, quirky type of uh, um, toy and or device that Nintendo released. And then, let me just fast forward, we have a section dedicated to the very first arcade games that Nintendo released by, back in, I believe, 73. So these are the typical, you know, early Japanese arcade uh, board games. And uh, here, this is a very famous one, obviously Donkey Kong uh, with uh, Mario and Pauline, which was originally supposed to be Popeye, but then Nintendo switched uh, to Donkey Kong. So very, very interesting stuff. And of course, um, we have the Game & Watch games. Here we're entering into the more uh, modern, um, toys and devices that Nintendo produced. Um, here's the very first Game & Watch, which is uh, Ball. Then we have Parachute, uh, Donkey Kong, M the Mario ones, and so on. Um, we have this uh, mini arcade machine that was, I believe, Popeye, some uh, Disney games. And let me just fast forward a little bit. We're getting towards the end. Uh, we have the Color TV game, which was the very first Nintendo TV console. Um, this is the TV Game 6. Very sought after item, you know, within collectors. Um, and it was, I think this, this was a con, uh, Pong clone machine. And uh, really, this is where all, it all started for Nintendo as far as the consoles. Um, we have the uh, racing game for the TV uh, with the steering wheel. We have some other stuff, and again, this is amazing. Just the, you know, the propaganda, the advertisements from the, uh, from back in the day. This was a, uh, yeah, very nice bonus how the game puts everything together. You know, descriptions, clear, high quality pictures of the of the products, um, numbered, and the name, the 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 release date, and the price in yen. This is another very cool thing. It tells you the price and the year the product was released. And uh, moving forward, we have more computer games. And of course, here we have none other than the family computer, which is what the NES would you know become here in North America. Um, and the, then I think this is where the book ends. We have the you know the Rob uh, machine there, and obviously the Famicom. And yep. That's that's really it uh, here. The final section is basically the Nintendo logos throughout history, um, yeah, and it's funny how the logos uh, changed over the years. Very interesting, very very cool stuff. Um, and that's the end of the book. Just the credits and then the index, obviously. So there you have it, guys. Um, again, if you if you guys enjoy Nintendo. I would say definitely get this game, uh, not game, but book. Um, it has a lot of very important information, very interesting information, and, it, it, and even though it's not really about video games, it's mostly about the toys and the things that Nintendo created, I think it really gives a very good picture of the innovation and the creativity behind um, basically the people um, that uh, run Nintendo. And uh, it's very funny how their products from the past are very similar to the products from nowadays. Um, you know, they focus on creativity and innovation, and it's and it's something that um, it's really cool in my opinion. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the video. Uh, please leave any questions you have in the comment section. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.